Hello my bookish lovelies, Kira here, and today I'm going to be filming my mid-year book freakout tag. I am so excited. I actually really love this tag like every year. Question number one is best book you have read in 2020. For this, I actually picked The House on the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. I did a full video um, discussing this. It's, it was kind of messy because, like, this is not one of those books, like, that you can just kind of accumulate, like, in just a few words or thoughts. Like, there was so many thoughts and so many feelings, and I didn't want to give any of the spoilery information away because, like, 90% of what I found so magical about this was the discovery and the journey that I took with these characters. So I really, really love this book, but this book, like, actually, I feel like this book is going to stick with me forever because it's just, it was such an impactful book and the messages, like, that it sent, like, found family trope I is in it and I love it so much. And the very subtle uh, male-male romance, like, that is in it, it's just, it was just, everything about this book was just positively beautiful and I cannot convey how much I positively loved it. The best sequel you have read in 2020. For this, I picked Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. I actually read the Diviner series for the first time this year, and um, I wasn't too much of a big fan of the third and fourth book in the series, but I really, really, really loved the first book, and I really loved the second book. I feel like they really carried like the whole series, and I actually, unpopular opinion, because I know like a lot of people really love the Diviners more, which is the first book. I actually really loved Layer of Dreams because I felt like it really expanded on the first book and really gave you a little bit more of a view on the characters and every character that was going to play a part. I felt like it really expanded on everything that I learned from the first book. He just gave me a bigger perspective of what was going on in the world of the Diviners. Question number three is a new release that has been released in 2020 that you have wanted to read but have not had a chance to read yet. And for me, that is Burned by Patrick Ness. This is actually kind of an interesting book. Like, this is Patrick Ness's newest book. And ever since I saw it, like, for one thing, I am really obsessed with this cover. There's actually a dragon in here. So there's this impoverished family, and um, they actually end up having to hire a dragon to help them on their farm, which is considered kind of a taboo thing. Um, usually you don't hire dragons, like, unless like, you're really, really poor. But our main character, Sarah, um, is kind of caught up with the dragon and she doesn't even know it. The dragon comes to the farm with this prophecy. It has to do like a lot with her and she's kind of caught up in the whole thing. With this being set in 1957 and you have dragons like working on the farm, it almost feels like it's going to be something like of a fantasy alternate history. And I really, really like those because I've been looking at it for a while and I'm really happy like that it's finally out. Question number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year, and for that it's going to be The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. They, she's been talking like this book up for uh, forever, like the author has, and basically like Addie LaRue, um, if you don't know about this book, is um, this girl who makes a bargain with the devil, and she described it at one point like this was probably going to be the closest to a romance like that she's ever made. And I'm really kind of intrigued by the fact that there's going to be like a human, maybe like devil kind of like romance thing. But everybody that Addie LaRue meets ends up forgetting her, which is kind of like why it's called The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And this is supposedly like a book that V.E. Schwab has been working on for a really long time that she's been mulling over for years and she finally got it down in paper. So I'm really excited because um, I have really loved a lot of the things that I have read by her and I could not be more excited. Question number five is my biggest disappointment. So I actually, um, I don't usually DNF books very often, but I DNF Blood Air. I was really looking forward to this, but I got into it and I was not vibing with the main character at all. Like she was this person like that had been running from her, from things that had happened in her past. And she was supposed to have all these street smarts and I just, it just, I don't know, I wasn't sold on it because she made far too many very careless mistakes and I just was not convinced and I just felt like the, the mistakes that she was making, while they were admirable, maybe she could have figured out like a more tactful way to approach them and still kind of, you know, like solve the issues like without revealing herself. You know, like I just, I had so many mixed emotions about this book. I, a lot of people really love this book and it was really hyped up. Um, but this book was definitely not for me and it was a book that I'd really looked forward to. So I was really, really sad that I just could not get 
into it. I got almost halfway through it and I just I ended up not being able to fin finish it. Question number six is the biggest surprise. So I read a book called The Younger Man by Katherine Hale and I'm not big on good boy romances. Like I usually like the bad boy romances but I happen to really like how this was done. Um, there is a substantial age, age gap and I thought that was really going to bother me going in but how it was portrayed and everything, um, how it was approached and how like it just felt so natural and so so wonderfully happy and just like just the right time and the right instances like for everything that happened in this book I was just really amazed it ended up being a five out of five stars for me because I just was so blown away by it it was actually a sports romance and um it was beautiful and I just I can't stress enough like how much like I think about this book all the time like this is another book that I just think about all the time Question at number seven, favorite new author. It could be a debut, a debut author or it could be an author that is new to you. And for this, I picked Grady Hendrix. Grady Hendrix wrote the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires and I recently read that this year and I really, really loved it. Actually, I really love vampire books um, and so it had like a nice little twist as far as like vampire books go and I just really, really enjoyed it and I was really amazed. So I got into digging into um, another book that I'm hoping to read by him soon. It's called My Best Friend's Exorcism and it was out a few years ago. I love the, I love the 90s kind of cassette cover to this. It is gorgeous and a lot of people who have really enjoyed the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires had read My Best Friend's Ex Exorcism in the past, so I'm really excited. I'm hoping to be, be able to get into that one in the next couple months too. I absolutely loved um, the 80s retro feel, retro horror, and I really loved um, that retro feel. I feel like if you're a fan of Stranger Things, you're also going to really like have a good feel for these vintage style horror books that he's writing. Question number eight, newest fictional crush. I actually recently read From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Hawk is the love interest in this. Ugh, the vibe in this is just so good and this actually kind of put me into a reading slump like right after I finished it because I it was it's new adult romance but it's got a vampire twist and so like Hawk Finn is our leading guy in this and it is so good and um, actually like Hawk kind of gives me Ray Sand um, vibes from Akamath, Fortimist and Fury by Sarah J Mass. And I don't say that lightly because like I devoured this the same way I had once devoured Akamath. And um, yeah, Hawk is like now my new book boyfriend. So I just, I love him so much. It's just. Oh. Question number nine is new favorite character. There's actually, I have to say that there's two new favorite characters because I cannot just say Sigrid because Sigrid was really awesome. He was in City of Stairs by Robert Jackson Bennett and I really loved um, him in there. He was like, he's just a badass. He's, he's like this kind of pirate warrior and he's just such a fascinating character. Like I've only read the first book in this series. Like the last book is supposed to be from his perspective and I'm hoping to get to those like also like in the next couple of months because I cannot wait to interact with that character and see like where his storyline goes because he just he blew me away as a character. I cannot not mention this character because without this character I probably would not have been able to finish the books. It's actually Glocka from the First Law trilogy um, by Joe Abercrombie and um, I recently read this book as well. I do have a review up for this book also and he is such a complex character. He actually comes off as like one of those characters like that is evil and cruel and he's like he's missing teeth and he was tortured so he's he's, he's actually disabled and uh, he actually for all, everything that he is he may do like really rotten things but he's actually not a bad guy like he does it out of duty and not necessarily like will and so the complexity of this character like makes him feel so two-dimensional and I would read this book again and again just so I can get more interaction with this character because by far and above he's one of the most three-dimensional characters that I have ever read. Question number 10, a book that made you cry. Um, it was actually The House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. We have to, once again we're going to talk about that again because I cannot shut up about this book. Like I cannot tell you guys like how much I really think that you guys all need to read this book because it is a bottle of sunshine and it made me so happy and um, 
I would have done that for the next question too, but I, there's another book that I really wanted to talk about and I really love this. Like, it's just, I actually cried tears because I was so happy and there was parts like right here, like that took me like on this like roller coaster. I got so into it like that there was a part like that really made me really sad, but like then I got really happy and it was just like, I was just a bundle of like absolute emotions and I just could not contain them anymore. So I really, please read this book. That's, that's all I ask. Just please read this book. Question number 11 is a book that made you happy and I'm going to pick Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This book is another book that really made me happy. This is actually a romance book, an adult romance book, so it does have adult romantic scenes in it. And um, this is actually a book that's set in a renaissance fair where the two main characters, like they get along when they're in renaissance outfits, but when they're not in renaissance outfits, they are bantering back and forth. It's like this angsty, like hate to love kind of thing but it also like goes through like you know like valuing like people's flaws and um it just the whole thing like was was it was complex enough to make me happy and stimulate me intellectually but it was also um simple enough like that i could breeze right through it so everything about like this book the setting the romance it was just so happy and it made me it made me smile like so many times and i was just it was so giddy reading it i just could not contain myself Question number 12, the most beautiful book that you bought this year. So for that, I actually picked Dead Astronauts by Jeff Vandermeer. I love the kind of like really psychedelic cover on this. Like it's really pretty, it's very colorful, but out of everything, we have really these bright pink, beautiful end pages, which I don't see bright pink end pages very often, but more than anything, we have this beautiful underneath. And for this, like, it is just gorgeous. The spine is okay, but then when you get to around to the back of this, we have just more beauty. I just absolutely love this. It's just so pretty and so shiny. And, oh, I have not been able to stop fawning over this book since I got it. I still need to read it. Um, it's definitely, like, different from, like, a lot of other books I've heard because it is a science fiction, and Jeff Vandermeer tends to have a very different taste, like, when it comes to science fiction books, but I am just, I think this is going to be fabulous. Oh, God, I love this book so much. The phys Actually, the main reason I bought this book, I would have gotten this book for Kindle, but then I saw, like, the, the dust jacket and then, like, what was underneath, and I just knew without a doubt that I had to physically own this book because I just thought it was gorgeous. Question number 13, what books do you still need to read by the end of the year? So I have a lot of books like that I still need to read before the end of the year, but I think I have like at least three that are really high on my list as far as books that I want to read. Um, one is 1Q84 by Hakiri Murakami, and it is a science fiction, like very surrealist science fiction. It's a huge book. I'm hoping to start it next month. And, um, it's, I, I've never encountered like anything with Hikaru Murakami. I really am intrigued by Hikaru Murakami. I've heard a lot of interesting things and I feel like he's one of those authors that you either really, really, really love him or you have like not so hot feelings for him. So I'm really excited about that. I also want to get to the Bear in the Nightingale series, um, which uh, I've heard also like really interesting things about. It's an adult Russian fantasy. And so many people who have read it have loved it, and so I'm really excited for that as well. Another book that I really, really want to get to is Queenie by Candace Carty Williams. Um, I honestly, like, I'm going to go into this book blind. Like, I just know that it's been hyped up big time. I know, like, that a lot of people have really loved it. And it's been on my TBR for quite a while, and I knew what it was about when I bought it, but it's been a while since I bought it and I really have been meaning to get to it. It's like one of the contemporaries like that I have like that's towards the top of my list. So I'm really hoping to get to that one as well. So I have some people that were really excited um, to be tagged for this because I'm really excited to be tagging them as well. So um, so first person um, I have is April from 12 Months of April. I also have Kira from Kira Can Read. I also have Connor from Connor's Library Corner. I also have Lucy from The Dreamy Reader. And then I'm also going to be tagging The Reading Witch. Well, guys, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Um, please go ahead and check out all of those booktubers like that I talked about. I'm going to leave all of their links in the links below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this mid-year book freakout tag. I will see you guys again very soon.